Now that we've balanced chemical reactions, let's look at these reactions in more detail. It turns out that some, but not all, ionic compounds will dissolve in water. For example, the compound ammonium phosphate. If you tried to dissolve some ammonium phosphate in water, and you find that it does dissolve, we say that that is soluble, which means it makes an aqueous solution. So we write inside the parentheses for the phase, lowercase aq for aqueous solution. If it does not dissolve, we say it's insoluble, and we would write the phase as a solid S. So it turns out ammonium phosphate does dissolve in water, so the phase would be aqueous. Something like calcium carbonate, chalk, does not dissolve in water. So we write calcium carbonate solid. When you have a compound that's ionic and it does dissolve in water, we find that it conducts electricity. So here's an experimental setup which shows a battery as our power source and we have one lead going into the light bulb, the other lead going into a glass and on the left hand side we have just liquid water. Notice the light bulb is not lit up. If we have the same experimental setup but now we dissolve some salt in the water, the light bulb does light up. So this is a simple test called the conductivity test, and when the light bulb is lit, that means that current has to flow, and notice the wires are not touching here, so there's got to be something that carries that current. If it carries the current, that means it contains cations and anions in the solution. Well, looking at the formula, NaCl, we have a neutral molecule, but as soon as we dissolve it in the water, we formed cations and anions. So this is telling us that if an ionic compound dissolves, that means it also breaks down, which is called dissociates, basically this is just the reverse of our crisscross that we learned when we were forming ionic compounds. The compound sodium chloride does dissolve in water, so we write the phase as aqueous. However, it lights the light bulb in this experiment, so we know it doesn't stay as a neutral molecule of sodium chloride. Instead, it forms the cation, which we know sodium is always a plus one cation. So that's still dissolved in the water, it's aqueous, and the anion is the chloride anion, also dissolved in the water. So the question next is, if some ionic compounds dissolve and some don't, how can you tell which ones will dissolve and which ones won't dissolve? And the answer is, there's a table in your lab manual that shows you numerically how much of the substance dissolves and we're going to use that table to answer that, that question. So here is the table from the lab manual and notice at the bottom of this table the standard for solubility is greater than 1. This is how many grams dissolve in 100 grams of solution. We use an arbitrary standard of 1 because everything dissolves to a little, to a small extent. Some of these numbers are very small, 1 times 10 to the negative fourth, 2 times 10 to the negative third. So our cutoff is going to be a value of 1. Notice this table is only for ionic compounds. If you had a compound that's not ionic, if you had an acid, 
in this class, acids we consider to be aqueous. They dissolve in water. That's not true 100%, but all the acids that we'll deal with are soluble in water. Now this table also doesn't have every single combination of cation and anion, so if you are asked, especially on a homework problem, is this compound soluble or is it not soluble, if it's the first place to look is this table, but there's also a table in chapter 7 in the textbook that gives things in a slightly different format, but for our exams, this is the format we're going to use and this is the one you want to check first. However, due to the randomness of the homework problems, you might get a compound that doesn't show up here. In that case, go to the flow chart in Chapter 7 in the textbook, and that will tell you whether it's soluble or not. So, we take an ionic compound like barium iodide, and we use this chart. Notice all the cations run down this column, all the anions are in the top row. Everything is by alphabetical order according to the name. So you have acetate followed by bromide followed by carbonate and so on. So if we find barium, cation, iodide, anion, we find a value of 68. So barium iodide with a table with a value of 68 is greater than 1. So this is soluble in water. That's aqueous. Sodium sulfate, next. Find the sodium in the table and then the sulfate and that value is a 20. 20 is greater than 1, so it's aqueous. Notice if the value had been a 1, 1 is not greater than 1, so we would say it's insoluble. Some of the compounds are just listed as I for insoluble. They don't have a numerical value. And then the last one, copper 2 hydroxide. Copper 2 plus hydroxide, we get a value of 3 times 10 to the negative fourth, which is less than 1, so we would say copper 2 hydroxide is a solid. It does not dissolve in water.